welcome back so this month four-way project is proposition from me and uh, it's a stool and this is the inspiration for it um, so the project is either to make a stool with four or three legs and uh, any other embellishment wood type and everything else is up to the maker so uh, this is the inspiration for this uh, project this stool uh, we used to make these quite a lot uh, at the school where I worked and uh, mm -hmm. where I learned my trade as well and uh, uh, so it was like a little bit more advanced project for uh, uh, students and uh, you can see through mortise and tenon uh, joint and it's wedged so and uh, this actual stool was uh, at the balcony for maybe 12 years now uh, never been moved from there and experienced all the weather and uh, snow and uh, rain and hail and everything so sun and it was lacquered originally so you can see how it peeled off uh, but the wood is pretty much intact and quite solid and it still does uh, when you slide it around still that makes that um, solid noise <laughs> So that's nice, nice sign. And this is oak, by the and way. This is my stool. So again, oak, and uh, you can see the joinery. So it's three leg. It's joined at the middle. Two boards. You'll see how I do that. And there's two stretchers. And this one is also with the wedge. These outside are not. It's a nice tight fit. So, okay. So what I have here is a piece of oak. It's a two inch thick, a little bit over two inches. So it's uh, 53, 54 mil. Uh, now I have cracks on uh, that end and this and is quite solid as it appears to be uh, this is around 170 mil uh, wide so 170 so that's 340 uh, diameter a little bit bigger than uh, um, after I plane it so it will be a little bit uh, lower than that so that's my uh, length times two so what I'm going to do for now uh, is go 350 mil once, twice, and uh, this is my cut line, and I'll join this one uh, edge. Okay, so I set up the, the plane. This is old one. Uh, it's Ulmia brand from, uh, and uh, I got it from the as a gift from old master, one of the old masters. And uh, I haven't used it for actually quite a while. And uh, when I had a, a little bit of a leakage in the in the shop, I guess at one point it uh, sort of drip on the blade so it's all rusted and uh, uh, but I clean it up a bit sharpen the blade uh, and you see here the the bottom is from the horn beam traditionally made here at least in in Croatia so it's very really hard and uh, durable so a jointer would be a great option uh, but I only have this one edge to plane I don't care about the faces uh, because once I glue this I have enough uh, overhang on pretty much all the sides and length and uh, thickness so there is a seat here uh, no matter what so a uh, little bit of exercise and uh, yeah see you in a bit uh, 
what I have here are, I believe they are called in English, uh, winding, winding, winding sticks. So uh, they have to be sort of uh, same uh, width. Doesn't matter the length uh, because I want this edge to be flat uh, without any twist, and this will exaggerate any twist. So one side is painted. I'll set it here. The other one is plain, clear, and uh, just sight uh, through. Now what it's telling me that this side here is a little bit high, so this side is more like this, and this more, and this side more like so. So. That looks perfect enough. A little bit of ridge here, which I'll just clean that. And uh, now just cut it in half and glue it. And if there is some imperfection, uh, just clean it up with the smoother and uh, should be nice uh, joint. Okay, so the board was like so, just rotated it to these sides, should meet up quite well. Like I said, I don't care about, uh, I'll just align it as best as I can, I don't care about um, if it's, uh, it's not flat, now at least. with a little bit of force uh, this side is closed and uh, you can see here on this side I have a gap so what I'm going to do uh, is just uh, plane it down a little bit so There is no need to uh, put glue on both faces, just put a nice bead like so, spread it around. Uh, if you want to prevent the slippage, uh, you just bring them together and uh, try to, although they are uneven now, try to rub them in a few seconds. And you'll feel the glue grabs. Now, even if it does slip, it's not, uh, it has a lot of uh, thickness. put a little bit of tension and if it does need adjustment just old persuader is the best you don't need coals here this is quite thick it won't uh, bow out and explode I like to flip it around if I can and put one clamp, clamp opposite way Now, um, old masters taught me, <laughs> and this was actually 
uh, a joke uh, from them. Um, you know, you put a lot of pr uh, you put enough pressure on the on the wood on the joint like this when the water start starts coming out. So that's your first sign. Okay, here is my blank seat blank. Um, it's I believe three hundred and twenty mil. Somewhere around here. So I'll turn it maybe a bit smaller, and I want a. Uh, like this a little bit chunkier base so we just mount it on a screw chuck so this is the bottom I want uh, first chew up everything so the ball gouge By the look of it, there is no gap where the glue joint is, so that's nice. Um, now at the bottom, I would like a, like a nice flowing um, curve to the to the outside, but on the outside, on the top, I want nice curve to the bottom. So just have to find a nice <coughs> middle uh, to those both designs to meet at the edge here. Uh, now I want something to grab here. Now I'm going to make a nice bead so it looks decorative when you look it from the bottom. out the curve or make it nice and flowing uh, with the scraper again these tiny little chips from this all is flying everywhere so I'm protecting my face with my hand this needs sharpening Okay, that's not too bad.
that looks uh, great. So I'm doing this uh, by the feel of it, by the looks of it. So I'm going roughly in the middle of this uh, space here uh, as this distance and uh, now if I align the grain uh, or the seam right uh, up and down so 90 degrees would be here so that's my first leg and then I just space it out walk it if you like to other two locations Let's say here, okay. So I need to reduce it somewhere around here. It's a little bit of trial and error, but wow, on the second try. Okay, and let me show you the setup for drilling. So what I have here is a mark where I need to drill. And the spindle is locked so that mark is sort of levelish with the center of the seat. Now next I have the uh, tool rest pointed at degrees that I, that I want. So my leg stuck. With go like so okay and that's it you don't have have to have any uh, special jigs or anything um, user laid and uh, it doesn't have to be perfect like I said it's not rocket science it doesn't have to be perfect in the de degree so I just line it up with the tool rest I have it so I'm parked at my tool rest here, or lean to it, just to line up the drill. I keep it horizontal, and off you go. to the other hole. Maybe carried away with drilling the hole. It's not going to pop the other side, but I may have too much of a dip here. So we'll see.
okay none of the holes are torn out which is great uh, now this part is pretty clean I have to clean this part here but at this point you can take it off the chuck and uh, test it with your bottom <laughs> I guess and uh, yeah it's, it's quite nice Okay, the seat is all done. Nicely sanded, ready for for the legs. Okay, so the legs I have to um, already done. So I'll show you a little bit more in close when I turn this one. So overall, overall length is 550 mil. That's included with these stubs and uh, i'll leave those uh, once i shape the bottom of the of the feet or uh, um, adjust for the angle uh, of the legs so i'll mount the camera and uh, we'll start some measurement and uh, i'll use q for everything Okay, so the blank is nice and round. Now, as regards of the diameter, exactly diameter, I just uh, plane it with the skew until it's round. That's my measurement. If it's a millimeter off, doesn't matter because you won't be able to to notice that. So I have a caliper set for the length of the tenon, and I rough it out. And I have caliper set for 30 mil, which is the force a bit I use for the seat. And uh, yeah, a little bit more. And at the end, I want slight tapered here. I have slight burnish mark here. And I just now make it parallel. And and roughly around six seven mil here. I just make it slight dome here. Now before moving on, I'll just test the fit. I want to show you the fit. So it goes in, you feel the resistance so it's not sloppy. And at the end it tightens up and that's it. It's self-holding. So this is that little uh, cone and uh, just by eye I put the mark from the bottom about 2 mil up, just by eye. And uh, I have another caliper set, I put in the bottom of that tenon, I put one leg and mark lightly here, that's the peak of my curve. So, try to show you. So you can see maybe how, oops, you can see maybe how 
this is the peak of the curve and tapers down first job is from this line to this line make a taper slight taper go down to this line now just connect the dots Okay, so that's one taper, there is a little hump here. Okay, that will be okay for now. Now at the bottom, I will measure just roughly 5 mil. And I will go down to the spur drive, almost, I will say. Like so. And... Parting tool goes to this shoulder. And another... Eh, 4 mil, something like that, for now. I don't want to make it too thin here and just rough this part down okay okay so next task is from this bottom uh, shoulder to this line I want to taper so looks like so so here is the peak of the uh, curve here and it tapers down and what I like to do to measure the or get the, the taper as best as I can is I position the tool rest so here it's roughly 10 mil and if I project it down here try to use the ruler so if this is parallel you can see here distance here should be again around 10 mil so this is approximate this will move uh, as I uh, <coughs> sorry if when I take the bulk of it away so for now I'll just start to shape it roughly. Now if you watch the gap, now from my angle of view like so, it's a little bit different than from the position of the camera, but here <coughs> Here I'm still around maybe even 12 mil, and here I'm around 6 mil. So still need to bring this down. Now I'm getting vibrations. I can slightly tighten it. Now this part I don't touch with the, the tool anymore, I still have a line here, but that will, that will sand away, you can see it, maybe now it's white line in the middle. One twenty grit. Well, 
like to do is just go with the grain because you always have some uh, marks from the sanding. Okay, so this is the design for the uh, stretchers, so a little bulbous in the middle and tapers down to the thickness of the Forstner bit diameter, which is 15 mil, so it flows in, so you don't have a shoulder here and uh, stuff like that, and this very will fit the another one. So. The way I center this stuff is by eye, so I watch on this side the spoke, the center spike, rotate it 90 degrees, adjust to the center, again rotate back 90, and that's it so for this side, and same on this side. So I watch down here. Now you can obviously mark it, it's not big of a deal. As always, first thing is to make it round. I'm doing everything with the skew again. mark the center of it so this is 300 mil so 15 uh, 150 mil and this leg has to be uh, 220 mil between the legs and a little bit more so that's 110 The extra length here doesn't bother me, we'll trim the, the tenon after, so... This is my design for the middle. First we'll shape the tenons. Up to this line I want to be nice and parallel. This one is slightly smaller. This one was parallel only to, to here. So I have this uh, little jig. So this is 15 diameter. The force and a bit hole and you just make it flat up to the highest point of the hole. And you can gauge it. Okay, so this burnish mark here is, <coughs> sorry, my uh, perfect fit, so 
All I want is now make it parallel. I can even make it slightly tapered here. Okay, now goal is to just blend this. And first I want from this line to this, somewhere around here, nice taper. And slightly dip down. Like so. Same here. Like that. And now just blend this part. Don't leave, don't touch the center line. Again, sand by hand in the direction of the grain, like so. There we go. So this is the shorter one, and this one will fit in this one. And you just sightseeing now you can even uh, bring the rest up here so you can drill it like so or like so i like to do it freehand just go like this and i'm trying to go on the other side uh just as the tip protrudes one uh, out so i don't get a blowout So here is the point on the other side, just there we go. Just sand this now. Fine tuning. I think that will be okay. So my scientific way to drill this, the simplest thing you can do is uh, so put your jig here, lay on top of it, force for a bit, poke the point in the center of the leg, like so. You can even drill it a bit, and now just. This is not the correct uh, angle, so align your drill with the next, with the corresponding leg, like so, and uh, make sure that you're parallel with the floor, it's somewhere around here, and off you go. Like so, same on the other side. Okay, now as I drill these two holes, I can cut it to length and actually that will be pretty much it. Now 
Now my goal with this chair is that you don't have to have any special G's or tools to, to be able to make stuff like this. So. They're all in and that looks pretty okay. Okay, first thing uh, I can assemble this part. You just put a little bit of glue, you don't need a ton of it. sure uh, this is quite important the slot has to be across the grain if you line it with the grain especially on a thin piece like this you will split it so that's pretty much it and obviously I went for a, a walnut wedge so put a little bit of glue on the wedge So I decided to mark for the foot now and uh, just cut it roughly and then later I can uh, adjust it if I have to. So what I'm going to do is take two wedges that I've cut and I'll just place my pencil on top of it and that should do the trick. Okay, so final assembly. I'll put the, the glue in the hole so I don't have much to clean up. the glue as a lubricant uh, it goes in nicely but if you stall it and you hesitate uh, then it will get grabby and uh, probably won't be able to uh, push it all the way in now what I like to do is this remaining glue I just push it in to the slot smear on the wedges so they be nice and glued in
Okay, so still have to wipe it off one more time the the wax and oil off, but as you can see it looks awesome. Thank you. 